so glad you're back for another ELA lesson today. We're continuing to read Mr. Tannen's Tide Troubles, which has so far been a great story, and we know that it's a piece of a literature, so we're focusing on the RL standards, reading for literature standards, as we read this text. We did a little bit of one-one, some ask and answer the last time we met, and today we're going to switch gears and focus on RL 2.5, which is to describe the overall structure of a story, including how the beginning introduces the story and the ending concludes the action. Now, we're familiar with identifying this in a text because I know you've done it in your classrooms and we've done it with other stories that we've read together. The chart behind me reflects how we can identify parts of a plot. And we know that the plot is all the events that make up the story. In Mr. Tannen's tie trouble, we started out by understanding that Mr. Tannen really wanted to save the playground at his school where he's the principal, but there just wasn't enough money in the budget. So he went home and started thinking about what he could do to help his school and suddenly had an idea to sell some of his ties at an auction. Well, word got out around town and where we left off was everybody couldn't wait to get their hands on one of Mr. Tannen's ties. In that story, much like any story that has an action that rises within the plot, we have the beginning where the problem and the main characters are introduced. In our story, we know that the problem is that there's no money for the new playground equipment that Mr. Tannen would like to have. And we know Mr. Tannen is the main character because the story is centered all around him. The rising action in a text is where the characters start to work on some kind of solution to their problem. That's where we have the uh-oh. So we know our uh-oh in this story is Mr. Tannen needing that money for his playground equipment. And he's starting to work on a solution to solve that problem. Because we know he's selling his ties, what might the solution to the problem be? Excellent job. His solution is to sell off his ties, and maybe he's gonna use that money to help buy some playground equipment for his school. So right now, we've gone from the beginning or into the rising action phase of our text. The climax is where the big action is going to take place. Some kind of a major hurdle is going to come into play. And then after we come out of the climax, woo, we get the resolution, everything is solved, loose ends are tied up, and that's where we want to be reading in today. So we're going to finish the rest of our story today, and we're going to talk a little bit about how this plot allows us to understand what the author is trying to tell us and how the structure helps us to understand characters, settings, events, all those key details that help us to really know and love a story. So we're gonna jump in right now and get back into our text. We left off right when Mr. Crabapple was buying the apple tie, the Mr. Donuts was buying his uh, tie with all the donuts and different pastries on it. Everybody around town was scrambling to get their hands on one of Mr. Tannen's ties. Let's see what happens next. The auction was a huge success. Every tie was sold except one. Mr. Tannen couldn't, talk, couldn't part with his beloved blue ribbon tie. It was a present from Mr. Apple for being a great principal. He looked out at a sea of townspeople all wearing his ties. So now he's taking a look, everybody in town, they've all got the ties that they purchased from him. I wonder what he's feeling right about now in the text. Might be a little sad, might be happy. Thank you all. I have always taught my students, the more you give, the more you get. With this money, the Lynchhurst School will have a new playground. Mr. Tannen swallowed hard. My ties now belong to the town. Wear them proudly. But somehow, Mr. Tannen would forget his closet was empty. He would open it to get a tie, and with a tinge of sadness, he would remember. He only had one tie, and he was wearing it. Then he'd look outside at the playground being built. You have to give to get, he thought. Soon 
it was opening day at the new playground, Mr. Tannen had invited the whole town to the ribbon cutting ceremony. He tucked his speech in his pocket, grabbed his special scissors and adjusted his tie. He wished he had on his official ribbon cutting tie. The schoolyard was overflowing with people. Mr. Tannen made his way through the crowd. I imagine at this point in the text, he's probably feeling a little bittersweet. He's very pleased that he raised enough money for the playground to be built, and now it's actually been built so he can see the fruits of all of his efforts. But he might be a little sad still that all of his ties are gone because he really loved them and he was well known for them. Then he saw it. The playground was tied in a giant ribbon made from Mr. Tannen's ties. So the town used his ties and incorporated it into the playground and they even named it Mr. Tannen's Play Yard. That's pretty awesome. Mrs. Sweet Apple and Mr. Apple were at the microphone. Mr. Tannen, you have taught us all. The more you give, the more you get, said Mrs. Sweet Apple. You have given us a playground. We are giving you back your ties. With that, Mr. Apple untied the tie ribbon and announced Mr. Tannen's playground is now open. Look at the looks on those kids' faces. I bet Mr. Tannen feels very proud of himself for having saved this playground for his students. Mr. Tannen and his ties were together again. He slipped on his swing and slide tie and smiled. And that's the end of our story, which means that we have moved through all of the parts of the plot. We've identified the beginning, the rising action, and we were into the climax and the end, the resolution as we read today. So let's talk a little bit more about those two pieces. In the beginning of the text, when we first meet Mr. Tannen, we identify that he has lots of ties. Those pages, 16 and 17 of the text, serve to give us all of our background information. They let us know this is our main character, he's got these ties, and he is the principal of a school that needs a new playground. So the author is setting up all of the stage so that we can really identify what is going to happen in the text. The rising action happens way back here, pages 18 and 22, where we have Mr. Tannen realizing, I have all these ties. I can use these ties to help us raise money for the new playground. He realizes he doesn't need to worry about getting funding from the school board. He's going to solve this problem himself with his wonderful, beautiful ties. So we're starting to learn here in this rising action that we're solving a problem. The problem is that playground needs to be rebuilt and the solution is gonna have to come from Mr. Tannen. When we get to page 23, we're getting more detail to help support all of the people who are going to come out. They're gonna come by his ties. And details are very important in building the entire story. So we've gotta look at those closely. When we see on these two pages, 24 and 25, that Mr. Tannen is auctioning off his tie, we can use the illustrations to help us understand that Mr. Tannen is very pleased. He's got these ties to sell. The people in the crowd are like, ooh, I wanna buy that tie. They're into it too. More detail that supports how Mr. Tannen is going to solve his problem in the rising action. When we get to page 29, when we see that it's opening day for the playground. 29 through 31, that's where we're coming into the climax. We know it's opening day for the playground. Everybody's excited to get there. The schoolyard is overflowing with people. Mr. Tannen can't wait. He makes his way to the front. We're waiting to see what's gonna happen. He's solved his problem beautifully because the playground is built, it's ready to go. And in these few pages, 29, 
in page 30 and 31, where we see the spread of this beautiful playground. The author tells us with her words, and the illustrator shows us with the picture, that Mr. Tannen's ties have been used to create a beautiful banner all around the playground because he sold those ties to raise money for this playground for his students. So the climax in this story is when we're learning that yes, he solved his problem, but the people of the town are giving all of his ties back because they want him to see that they realize he saved this playground. He made this happen. He had a problem and he solved it. So in the climax, when we're identifying that all of those ties are back and they were tied around the playground to show off to Mr. Mr. Tannen how important he was to the community, the resolution comes right here. When they let him know, you get to have all your ties back, Mr. Tannen. And they thank him for saving the playground. They even named the playground after him, which is very cool. So in this story, we were able to identify all those pieces of the plot, all the events that made up the story. Tomorrow when we meet, we're going to work on continuing that action. And you guys are gonna do some of the heavy lifting and you're gonna record your answers for what happened at each part of the story. We'll do a little multiple choice too together before I set you off to do that independent work. But for now, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you Wednesday, bye.